A shock, Bloodline Rock development. Bloodline Rock kind of sounds like an Elvis song there. WWE removing a wrestler from their faction. Why TNA's partnership with AEW ended, and more. I'm Ollie Davis, and this is the Wrestle Talk News. Support Wrestle Talk. Give us a subscribe. After the traditional many months of nothing following WrestleMania, WWE's Bloodline saga has recently entered its next stage, aka the top of the fourth, second inning, third match in the seven meeting series playoff qualifier. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes teaming against the New Blood Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu at the Bad Blood PLE has created multiple ripple effects. Jimmy Uso made his first appearance since April, helping Roman defeat the men who wrote him off TV. And right at the end of the broadcast, after Jimmy had also convinced Roman to save Cody from another New Blood beatdown, Rock, the final Dwayne Johnson, appeared at the top of the ramp, counted one, two, three on his fingers, made a throat-slitting gesture, and left. The gesture has been speculated to mean anything from Rock just counting the number of guys in the ring, Roman, Cody, Jimmy, and who are thus on his hit list, to him setting up a triple threat WrestleMania main event of him versus Rhodes versus Reigns. But in truth, we don't know, as The Rock cut a social media promo saying The Rock will let us know when The Rock is ready afterwards, and we haven't heard from him since. Instead, we've had to go by fan footage captured of Solo Sokoa, who was escaping through the crowd during The Rock's return, where he told Jacob this was all part of the plan. On the most recent episode of SmackDown, knowing they're outnumbered, Jimmy Uso has tried to convince Roman to get Jay back in their group. And then on Raw, Jimmy twice tried to talk to Jay, who didn't respond. It feels like we're building to a reunion with Jay, Jimmy, and Roman ahead of some kind of Bloodline War Games match at the next month's Survivor Series. It'll be, I mean, it'll be such a cathartic resolution to years worth of tension between them all. I can't wait. Oh, but just one more thing. WWE are currently on a European tour, and this footage has emerged of Jey Uso at the October 16th live event in Manchester, England, hitting his own version of The Rock's People's Elbow. Uh, Yeet elbow, if you will, in his victory over Bron Breaker. Could Jay actually be on course for a heel turn where he sides with The Rock and Solo Sokoa against Roman and Jimmy? What do you think? Let me know in the comments where I'll be replying to people from out of sane. Do you feel him, sir? According to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, though, The Rock isn't even going to be at WrestleMania for any of this to actually pay off. Last Friday's newsletter reported that The Rock wouldn't feature in WWE's WrestleMania 41 plans due to scheduling conflicts. The Rock himself then replied to this on Instagram saying, Don't believe any of that bullshit! Winky face emoji! Fist bump emoji! WrestleVotes Radio is now reporting that WWE's plans for The Rock have stayed the course since WrestleMania 40, and they have always expected him to be available for WrestleMania 41. That's why The Rock did the angle on The Ram, Raw After Mania, where he handed something to Cody Rhodes as it'll pay off next year. The Rock being at Mania 41 is also a big reason behind why WWE moved the venue from the originally planned Minneapolis location to the much bigger, much glitzier Las Vegas Stadium. But Jay might not be the only wrestler having faction problems. Whereas the Bloodline has a very specific set of criteria to become a member, you've got to be related to the Anoa'i family tree or be Sami Zayn, WWE's Judgment Day is a lot more hodgepodge. It originally started with Edge recruiting Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Then Finn Balor joined the group and kicked out Edge. Then Dominic Mysterio completed the quartet. Then JD McDonough gave them someone else to pin. Carlito started playing PS5 with them backstage. They kicked out Rhea and Damian at SummerSlam and replaced them with Liv Morgan. And then Liv just introduced Raquel Rodriguez at Bad Blood. The timeline graphic is starting to look like early Bullet Club. But now with Raquel coming in, WWE is reportedly considering getting rid of Carlito. According to WrestleVotes Radio, we are hearing backstage discussions to potentially remove Carlito from the Judgment Day and get him back into a singles competitor. Possibly a singles push. The report notes there isn't a timetable in place for this, but they expect we're going to see a reason over the next few weeks of TV why the Judgment Day would want to kick him out. And that by the end of the year, he'll be a singles wrestler again. Perhaps the storyline reasoning could be him cracking on to Raquel, who he seemed to fancy on Monday's episode. But it's not just wrestlers getting booted from their factions. A long-standing company tradition might also be getting wished well in all its future 
endeavours. The 2020 pandemic year notwithstanding, WWE have run a December 26th live event in Madison Square Garden every year since 2013. And before that, the promotion ran a Christmas show there for decades up until 1991. But with its new owners TKO now totally calling the shots, WWE's new live event schedule has no Madison Square Garden show listed for the whole holiday tour season, with the 26th of December date taking place in Jacksonville, Florida which is AEW home turf. This could be because WWE are already running the New York area with the Saturday night main event TV special on the 14th of December in Long Island, which is reported to be a pay-per-view caliber card. Or it could be because of the expensive running costs of the MSG venue. This is all despite PW Insider reporting a month ago that WWE were planning on running a 26th of December MSG show. And that's not the only thing that WWE are changing. Not content with calendar-shaking 2025 dates that have the Royal Rumble taking place in February and WrestleMania in late April, Survivor Series is currently being listed to start at 6pm Eastern Time rather than the usual 7pm. This is very similar to the last PLE, Bad Blood, which started earlier in the day so it didn't clash with the same night's UFC show. It seems that the more international events WWE have done, which often start much earlier in the day, they've realised that start time doesn't have a significantly negative effect on viewership like they might have previously feared. Which is unfortunately more than can be said for AEW. While the headline, AEW doubles previous week's viewership, might sound like a good thing, context is everything. Their rating in last Tuesday's unfamiliar time slot was by far the worst figure the promotion had ever done. Wednesday's Dynamite, back in its usual time slot, managed to rebound with 633,000 viewers and a 0.20 rating in the 18-49 demographic. But that is still one of the show's lowest ever numbers. Tuesday's NXT, for comparison, actually beat them in overall viewership with 639,000, but did slightly lower in the 18-49 at a 0.18. If only they had that fake match they were never going to put on! Following Takeshita's international title win at Wrestle Dream, a graphic was posted announcing a dream match you didn't know you wanted. Takeshita defending his championship against CMLL's Mascara Dorada. Unfortunately though, it wasn't real. The graphic was fan-made, but it tricked many people online, including both PW Insider and the Wrestling Observer. Well, give that fan a job in head office, because it's now been reported that AEW saw that graphic and thought, Sounds like a pretty good match, actually, and they're going to try and book it. Right now, Dorada hasn't been able to work for AEW, but they want to get him on. The following story, however, is somehow not fake news. Politico journalist Alex Eisenstadt is reporting that, in an effort to win over the bro vote, Donald Trump is expected to do an interview this week on The Undertaker podcast, which is hosted by retired wrestling great Mark Calloway, per person familiar. There's a lot to dive into here. Mark Calloway has a familiar, dude is really living the gimmick. To really get the bro vote, maybe appear on Vince Russo's podcast. And pro wrestling is politics, and politics is pro wrestling. Another victim of politics appears to have been TNA's working relationship with AEW. From the fantastic December 2020 Winter is Coming episode through to it fizzling out the following year. In a fightful interview with former TNA president Scott Demore, who was running the promotion until earlier this year, he revealed that Kenny Omega wanted to do a lot more matches during their partnership, like one planned bout with Josh Alexander, but couldn't because a lot of restrictions. It's not fully explained what those restrictions are, whether it be Kenny working heavily injured at the time, or anything from higher ups in AEW or the then Impact executives. But Demore did say that Omega drew great numbers for the company. Interestingly, Damore mentions that he still has a great relationship with AEW, which is shown by the amount of AEW and Ring of Honor talent appearing on his new Maple Leaf promotion, suggesting that those restrictions back in the day might have been placed on the relationship by TNA's side. Speaking of TNA, the promotion is nearing its biggest show of the year, Bound for Glory, where Frankie Kazarian has just been added as the special guest referee to Joe Hendry's world title shot against Nick Nemeth. Oh, that sounds like a great match, so why not warm up by watching one of the worst matches of all time? Go over to Parts Fun Known right now to watch the brand new episode of Worst Match Ever, which has Luke, Sullivan and Tempest sitting through Seth Rollins vs. The Fiend at Hell in a Cell 2019. Here's a clip. What? What's the... Re no. <laughs> no. 
no, referee, this is not your job. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> please, Seth, please. Is he Seth's doing going, this, Seth? Maybe I'm the monster. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you crying? Why is he, like, crying? And then the bell no. rings. <laughs> no! 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 That doesn't make any sense! 